Hello and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I am Dr. Abstract. Let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com. Scroll down to the bottom and hit school. We're on lesson three, functions and events, and we've had two videos on functions. One was basic functions with things like parameters, arguments, scope, hoisting, return values. And the second video in lesson three was on function literals, which we tend to use a lot. Now, one of the most popular places we use those is with events, and we're about to see events. We also took a look at the arrow function, which is the new ES6 version, of an anonymous function or a function literal. Cool. Okay. Well, let's take a look at events. Now, of course, you can go to the lessons and see all the resources and also try making functions online. Uh, but we're going to code right here in Atom. We've already taken a template. We've been working on this for a couple of videos now. <laughs> it's not, not looking all that great, to tell you the truth. Let's open this up in a browser and see what it's, what it's doing. Oh yeah, it's brilliant. It's saying Joyce, yo, and then disappearing out. Let's let's tidy this up a little bit and see if we can now apply an event to it. Does that sound good? All right. So looking down in here, we've got an animation, and that animation is just kind of going off the screen. So let's make it animate to the middle. Uh, right now, when we place the label, it's in the middle. So if we go from colon true. That means it will animate from wherever we say in here and go to the middle. Uh, so how about we just make that 100. We'll uh, wait for a little bit, 800, and then we're calling this arrow function right there. We're calling it and removing it. Instead of removing it, we'll do what we did when we called the done directly. Remember, we could have done this, done. And then that calls a named function. At that point. So usually we run it right there and then, but we will scale it to twice as big instead of removing. There we go. Okay, we're not even really using the done, so I'll comment that out. And uh, let's see what we got going on here then. Hopefully that tidies it up a little bit. Refresh. Yeah, okay, so it comes into the middle and then it expands open. All right, now what we can do is find out if the user presses on that then. All right, and that's, uh, that's called an event. There's all sorts of events. And the way we do that is we use a method called on. In traditional JavaScript, the method we use is add event listener. As a matter of fact, that also works here on the, on the canvas in CreateJS and Zim. So uh, we've got a label. Where is that label? Uh, yeah, okay, we're animating the label. Great. So just down below here, we will say label dot on click, for instance, call this function right here. So uh, now we're back to uh, putting in a function object here as the second parameter. So you see what we're doing? Label.on, click. If we wanted to do what we did with done, then we could put done in there. And then it would call the function done when we click. That's not usually what we do. I mean, we could. Usually we put in here, now in ES6, we would make an arrow function, like so. There we go, that's the arrow function. Well, this looks like, I don't know, dumbbells or something, doesn't it? And then we got a round bracket on the left, squiggly brackets on the right. Basically what it's saying is take this stuff and send it in to this block of code, run this function. And once we make that, we're often sitting right there and we hit enter. As a matter of fact, if we were to do this in Adam, Adam's got an AF. So as soon as we do AF, you see how it says arrow function, I hit enter. Then it makes our arrow function, rather than sit down here, it assumes that you might want to next specify a parameter. Okay, now uh, there we go. So label.onClick, call this arrow function. And in here, why don't we um, 
and make the label disappear. Label dot remove from like that. There we go. We may also want to make the label have a finger so that we can show that we're clicking on it. Let's try it. Now, I don't know if we're going to, if this will work, but we can try it and uh, then maybe you can tell me why it does or it doesn't work. So there it is. I click. Hmm. It didn't seem to do anything. Well, that's too bad. So uh, you might want to check to make sure there's no error. Uh, no error. A bunch of things. Wait a minute. It's gone now. That's kind of strange, isn't it? Hmm. It's because of the stage.update. Stage.update. Like so. We've made a change. This is later. When we click on the label, later on, we're saying, hey, remove that label, but we didn't update the stage. This stage.update is long gone. That happened when the document first loaded. This labeled and removed from is happening after our event. And then when we resize the stage, that automatically refreshed it. Let's try that again. So there it is. And then we click and now it's gone. Uh, note that we didn't have, when we bring this in, note that there's no finger on that indicating that we can click. I also don't know if we can click in the space. It appears that way. Quite often with text you have to press right on the line, but we know that that's a problem with the label, so it's almost never do you want to only press on the letters. Um, so we've made the label have a kind of an invisible background. All right, so label dot on click. We can also add in here label dot cur, a short chainable method that adds a cursor. Normally there's no cursor, so when you go dot add cur, the default is quote pointer like that. That's any CSS, any CSS um, cursor value you can put in there. But anyway, by default it is the pointer. So now we refresh here. There it goes. And now we can see that indeed, even if we're in here, it looks like it's got the pointer, but then when it leaves the edge, we don't have the pointer. And we press and it goes away. Isn't that cool? So that's the on method. Add event listener also works. Add event listener. This is learn JavaScript. And unfortunately, raw JavaScript has uh, the way to apply an event is with add event listener and we use events all the time and it's a bit annoying to say add event listener all the time we had to do that back in flash as well add event listener oh, so for years we put up with that then when create.js came from the flash world when create.js was built they said nah why don't we just call it on <laughs> They also provided a few extra things that, that are quite handy. For instance, if we only want to run this event once, then comma null, comma true, here's a true, and that means run the event only once. There's a few other things, but we don't need to worry about it. What we do need to worry about, though, eh, well, a couple things. What are other types of events? Uh, that's one. And two is this thing called an event object, because we actually can get more information about the event um, by collecting the event object in as the first parameter here. So we usually want to collect that, and when we do, we collect it as the parameter E, or event object all spelt out, or event obj, or ev. I don't know, E-V-N-T, <laughs> well, whatever you want. But E is a uh, one that we use all the time here for the event object. And because we're collecting only one parameter, that simplifies down to uh, that as follows. And you can bump these together. Oops, <laughs> not quite that together. You can bump those together if you want. I think I usually do. Uh, these two right here need to go together. That's one operator. Uh, so that doesn't work. All right, so we're collecting the event object. Well, what does that give us? Um, first of all, if we had a bunch of different things, we could have the events all call the same, the same, uh, same function. Now, it wouldn't work very well here. We'd have to have a named function at that time. 
and then we would collect the event object in there. Um, the handy thing about that is even though many different objects are calling that same event, we can use E to find out which one. And indeed we can use it here as well. Rather than hard coding in the label, we can say e.target.remove from. So e.target is something that the event object gives us. e.target refers to what caused the event. And in this case that will be the label. So we save this and instead of removing from, we can make the ska go back to 1, because I think it was at 2. So we refresh here. There it goes. It gets bigger. We press, and it gets smaller. Cool, huh? So we just use the e.target to gain access to what we clicked on. And I can show you with some with a container. It'd be nice to maybe see a container that's got lots of things in it, like a hundred monsters. And then we can put the event on the container and ask for e.target. And that will tell us what item from the container, what child in the container was operated on. Okay, how about before we do that, though? I mean, that sounds like fun. Before we do that, Let's take a look at other types of events. There's also mouse down. So before we leave the click, let's examine that more closely. So it comes in, I press down and I'm holding. I'm pressing right now and holding, and I let go. And it's when I let go that the click happens. It also doesn't seem that it really cares. I can let go somewhere else. Let's see if I can let go off the object though. That hopefully won't work. So ready? I click down, and now I go way over here, and I let go. You see that? Not a click. I click here, but I let go way over here, still on the object, and it counts as a click. So that's a little bit odd. Uh, in my mind, a click should be uh, fast. It should be down up. <laughs> it shouldn't be a click and hold, and then way time later, I let go, and that's, that's a click. But anyway, that's what we've got. No big deal. There's also a mouse down, but the mouse down obviously happens when we mouse down. Uh, note that we don't camel case that. So when we use events, they are all lowercase, except for one really, really ugly and unfortunately really popular event in raw JavaScript to find out if the document's tags have been loaded. That looks like this window, we ask the window dot add event listener. And then are you ready for this one? Dom content loaded. <laughs> Call this function. <laughs> Isn't that ridiculous? Uh, whoever whoever implemented that or put that in should, should be totally fired. They probably were fired. Hopefully they are fired. But unfortunately, that seems to be uh, what they've chosen. This tells us when the tags are loaded. There's quite a famous one called loaded, but that's more that's old. We don't really use that. That waits for all of the images and stuff to load, and, and we don't really need that. If we want to access the tags, we just need to know if the tags are loaded. And unfortunately, like I said, it's that big DOM content loaded. And look, they decided they just could not, I suppose, because it's the DOM, an acronym. They just could not leave it as uh, lowercase. But all other events are lowercase, as far as I know. And I'll put a little arrow function here, I guess, and we'll comment that out. So that would get the loading of the tags. Uh, luckily, ZimFrame has that built in for us. So ZimFrame waits for the tags to be loaded, and then it runs all of this stuff that we're seeing here and gives a ready, amongst other things. So um, mouse down. Let's try the mouse down. We refresh here. It will obviously happen when we first mouse down on it. So right away. So I'm going to, uh, this time I'm going to mouse down, but I'm going to hold it down. See, I'm still holding down. Now I let go. Um, so yeah, that's mouse down. There's also mouse over, like that, mouse over, and that will help us get rollovers. So here we go, we're gonna roll over, I'm not clicking. Boop, as soon as I roll over, it uh, got small. 
and then there's also mouse out, so the opposite part of the rollover. Refresh, and now I'm in a rollover. Here I'm rolling over, still over, and then when I go out, it uh, it gets smaller. So those are very common mouse ones. There's also press drag, uh, and uh, there's a mouse move as well. So if you mouse move over it, we could uh, we could increase the scale each, but those those happen really quickly. So a mouse move um, is almost like a ticker or like an um, uh, it's a request <clears throat> animation frame type thing. It, it goes as fast as as possible. And same with press drag. Uh, we have a drag up. Now we haven't really seen a drag. Why don't, why don't we work on that? I guess we'll say label dot drag like that. Uh, the drag will automatically add a cursor. So label dot drag. And now we can say on press up like that. And that's like after dragging, we would have a press up and it's going to set the scale back. So let's try her out. Let me refresh here. There it animates in. I pick it up. We're dragging. We're dragging. When I press up, there she goes. So that happens afterwards. Um, we also have a press move. Press move. Why don't, as we press move, let's change the scale to a random number between 1 and 3. Now this is going to look crazy, I think. I'm not, I'm not sure, but a press move happens really uh, quickly, like over and over again while you're moving. So while you're pressing down and moving, it's going to just uh, keep on doing that stuff, which is hopefully it'll flutter about and look kind of crazy. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> nice. I never tried that effect before. <laughs> kind of like it. Joyce, yo! Hey, yo! Hey, yo, Joyce! <laughs> All right. So, uh, great. Um, that's the press move. All right. So, why don't we leave that then? Uh, and there's other types of events as well. Hey, we've progressed, haven't we? Let's go up to the frame. Let's look at the frame way up top here. There's frame dot on. What do you know? Ready. So that's a ready event. And this is built into Zim. It's not a raw JavaScript event. We can do what's called dispatch events. So Zim has a frame and we have dispatched an event called ready. But here we are collecting it with the on method. So here's the first parameter of the on method, first argument that we're passing in. And this arrow function right here, that goes all the way from, you see this bracket, it's now got a blue line under it, it goes all the way down, whee, to the end right there, end of ready. And then that's the end of the method. So now it has a blue thing. All right, we go all the way back up, whee, frame dot on, and this is the first part of the on. So in other words, this is the first parameter, and all this stuff, that whole arrow function, is the second parameter. So we're going to do this anonymous arrow function. All of this stuff we're going to do when we're ready. And that's often how we build in JavaScript. Note that we're, we're already in a function. And then later, down here, there's another function inside a function. Here is another function within a function. So we have, that happens quite a lot. If we wanted to, we could have put another function inside of here uh, and another and another. We can nest really as many as, as needed for whatever purpose we have. Okay, cool, huh? So uh, that's another type of function. There's also a key, key functions where we can find out what keys are pressed. We may as well see that while we're talking about it. That's important. And that would look like this. Um, well, often it would look like, I think it's window.addEventListener listener key down. So we would add a, an add event listener to the window if you were in raw JavaScript. Or here, we we put it on the frame, frame.on, quote, key down. Call this arrow function. Now, instead of doing the arrow function with round brackets, I know I'm going to collect the event object. So I just do it like that. Here we go. I collect the event object, and in here we can make use of it. What do you think would be important for us 
uh, when we press the key. What would the event object tell us? Uh, yes, how about what key? So that's called e.keycode. Let's zog it. Zog e.keycode, camel case, like that. You might wonder, what are these key codes? Well, this is, this is how you find out. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So we press down there. Now to capture a key, you've got to click in the frame somewhere. That's just a, that's a JavaScript thing. I'm going to F12 to get our console. And now I'm going to press down some keys. Here's a space bar, 32. Here's a right arrow, 39. Left arrow, 37. Up arrow, 38. Down arrow, 40, etc. Right, an enter key, 13. So that's the key code that I think all, all uh, keyboards, even Macintoshes, and sorry, even Macintoshes follow the same. All keyboards do. All right, so that's how you get the key code, and then you can do something. For instance, if how about um, I don't know what the delete key is. Well, we should find out. Well, then I won't do my if yet. Let's find out what the delete key is. Over here, I hit the delete key, 46, yep, yeah, 46 is the delete key. So if e dot, oh, you haven't seen a conditional yet, have you? <laughs> we'll see that soon. It reads so easily. So if uh, key code is double equal to, uh, crap, I can't remember, <laughs> 46, 43. 46. If the uh, key code is equal to 46, then we can say, uh, this is a conditional, which like I said, you haven't seen. Can, well, we can do the e.target. Do we have an e? Yeah, we do. e.target. Oh, we don't. Uh, the e.target is no longer the label. So what was that? It was called label. So label dot remove from like the target was the label when we were dragging the label around, but not when we're pressing on a key. It's interesting. They could have maybe said e.target is the key code. I don't know what e.target is when you've got a key event. <laughs> Never use it. All right, so here we are. It animates in. Uh, I hit, I, I pressed in there to make sure that the focus is on the canvas here. And then I hit the delete key. Where the heck did the delete key go? Delete. And it worked. It went cool. I hit delete, and that deleted. So obviously, uh, this could be handy with arrows. We could move things around with arrows, and we've done that so much that we built a motion controller. So Zim's got a motion controller that handles all that stuff for you. There are some nuances with this. Uh, one is when the key codes go. So let me just show you that. Uh, we are zogging e.key code on a key down. Ready? Watch this. If I uh, sitting here and I hit the R key. If I hit it once, do you see that? We get 182. But watch what happens when I hold it down. Uh, I'm going to hit a different key, a T key. Hold it down, it goes 84 for about half a second. And then it's a whole bunch of 84s. And unfortunately, if you're using arrows in a game, that half a second is really annoying. You hold down the arrow key and you have to wait until it does that arrow key more often and moves your moves your your character, so we uh, have captured a different way of doing that. We still capture the key code, and if it's an arrow, then we use a ticker to animate immediately based on what that arrow says, rather than have to wait for the um, the key down event. So anyway, yeah, a little bit of advanced stuff there. Let's see, how are we doing for time? i got about five minutes. Let's uh, quickly take a look at a container. We are doing events. Events are very important, but because they're very important, they continue to happen all the time. So as we go through future lessons, we're going to see more from events. We've already seen enough, basically. We've talked about the, um, the event object. We've talked about different types of events. Let's um, just take a look at a container, though. Are you ready? We will say a new tile. A tile is a container as well. It's a quick way to get a whole bunch of stuff in there. New circle. Can't remember if we've seen circles already. I think we may have. Or did we tile dials? Maybe we just tile dials. So new circle. 
uh, comma, we say how many columns it has. How about uh, 10? And how many rows it has? How about 8? And the spacing in between them, 10 and 10. We'll center that on the stage where it's just going to go over top of our, our label. <laughs> why, don't, why don't we? I don't know if it'll work. We'll go label dot remove from and uh, see if we can just get rid of that label for a little bit. It, it may work for us. All right, so there's a new tile. We're going to center it on the stage. Let's have a look. It's going to be a bunch of black circles. Uh, there it is. It's a bunch of black circles indeed. Maybe just a little bit too many. How about we drop that down to eight? Uh, how about we drop that down to eight and four? Get a guy, well, six and four. Play it on the safe side and have a look. Refresh. Oh, <laughs> oh, cute. It looks like a little game or something already. Look, it's our tile of circles. Oh. All right, so there's our tile of circles. And that, once again, is a container. Now, uh, if we want to apply the on method, the on method itself does not chain. So it doesn't return the object. It returns, I don't know, a reference to the event. So therefore, it doesn't chain. In other words, we can't, we, we could go dot on, uh, dot on, and it will run once, but the results of this will no longer be the tile. So if we put this in a variable uh, or a constant, const tile is equal to this. And let's zog what it thinks the tile is. Tile dot, well, zog, uh, you won't know what that, uh, tile dot type. Normally, let's take the on off and I'll <laughs> take the on off and I'll show you what this would zog normally. Uh, can you guess? <laughs> could, could you possibly guess what the type of the tile is? F12. Indeed, down here at the bottom, almost at the bottom, is the fact that it's a tile from line 1, 2, 3. <laughs> what was that line number again? <laughs> yeah, 1, 2, 3, right here. So it's telling us it's a tile. But if we try and chain the dot on method, well, let's have a look. Might might give us a problem if we don't provide the on method with anything. Yeah, it's telling us uh, something. But uh, it's animating, or it's uh, zogging what? It doesn't even zog us anything, does it? It gives us an error right away. Okay, we need to put something in here. So we'll do an on mouse down, and we'll call a blank arrow function for now. There we go. All right, so on mouse down and a blank arrow function. My goodness, what's going on with all these fit -tit -tit -tit? Do you hear them too? It's like notification after notification. <sighs> How annoying is that? And we refresh here. Let's check that undefined. So there we go. Line one, two, three is now saying undefined. So in other words, this tile isn't a tile anymore. It's whatever the on method returns. And that, what it returns is a, an event object or something, does not even have a type property. So it's saying it's undefined. So we cannot chain on an on method, which means uh, we have to break out of chaining, tile dot on, and do it separately like that. And then if we ask for what the tile dot type is, it's no problem because the center returns the tile object, which therefore gets put into tile which has a type. And so we're back to uh, zim tile that says a tile. Now, because of that, because the on method cannot be changed or should not be chained, um, we've created a couple chainable methods that do something similar to on. One's called tap. So if we tap on something, we can get a function. And the other one is called change. So if any of the uh, change event is quite common amongst the, and we, we did see that a while back, the change event is quite common amongst the components. So we can go and on change, in quotes, call this function. So we did see that back a while ago and said, oh, but we don't know what functions are in, oh, but we don't know what events are. Anyway, uh, now we're getting into that. So we have a mouse down on the tile. The point is, in, inside of here, we want to find out 
what we mouse down on. Well, we would collect the event object, put it in there. I mean, you could do that if you want, or you can just put it there like that. And then we can say e.target.removeFrom, for instance. And what this will do is it will remove any object that we click on or mouse down on if we had a stage.update. So once again, as you're learning, as you're first starting this, uh, that's going to fool you a lot. If, if you don't see something, if you don't see a change, just try and remember, did I update the stage? All right, let's save that. And we refresh here, on them, refresh, and now we don't get a finger yet, but if I press on things, as soon as I mouse down, they disappear. Isn't that amazing? I love it. So you can have a hundred monsters and then operate those uh, quite easily. Why don't we give this a finger? Tile dot center. Do you want to try a tap as well, just to see what that's like? Uh, center dot cur. Actually, as soon as we give it a tap, I think it, it automatically gives. It assumes that you uh, that you're gonna need a cursor. So there's a dot tap, and the tap works slightly differently. Very similar. There we go. Comment that out. The tap doesn't require the event type. It doesn't require two parameters: the event type and the function. We know it's a tap. So we just pass in the function. And that's what the Zim tap looks like. So here we are, and now I tap. Now note, I press down and I hold and I let go. And there we are. As a matter of fact, if I press down and move, it's not considered a tap. A tap is a down up. Neat, huh? So what do we do? We just saw the E dot target. Now, um, there is one more before we go. The last thing we're going to see today is a rather, uh, well, how about the second last thing? Uh, the, the second last thing we're going to see is a rather oddly named thing called e.currentTarget. e.currentTarget. What that is, is whatever the event is placed on. So it's not what caused the event. e.target is what caused the event e.current target is what the event was placed on, in this case the tile. Or if it's tile.on and we ask for e.current target, it would be the tile, not um, the e.target, which is the specific element of the tile that caused the mouse down. All right, so e.current target.alp, for instance, 0.5. So what we're going to do is we're going to set whatever the e.current target is. Remember, that's going to be the whole tile. It's alpha to 0.5. But we're still removing the e.target. You ready? And when we press here on any one of them, press, that one goes, but we just set the alpha of the whole uh, current target. It's a silly name. <laughs> silly name. Um, that was the second last thing. Uh, the e.current target. So there you go. A couple things for you to think about or remember. Well, what I'm going to do now is back out on that and just show you what happens when we drag dot drag the tile. There we go. You ready? Tile dot drag. All right. And we refresh here. What do you think is going to happen? Bum bum bum. Ooh, look at that. Cool, huh? So instead of dragging the whole thing, it drags the target. And that's handy, because uh, now all we have to do is, hey, let's make a tile and drag it. If you want to drag it all, <laughs> this is how we used to do it. Current target, colon true. Isn't that funny? So we had to say, oh yeah, OK, if you, if you want to specify the current target rather than the target, um, this is how you can do it. So here we go. We now pick it up. And it drags the whole current target. But because we hated that name, <laughs> we said, OK, let's change that to all. So you can just drag all colon true. And isn't that nice? Now here we go. Refresh here. And there we are dragging all of it. Uh, wonderful. I don't want to do the drag. Let's leave it at, I suppose, at the tap there where we were removing. And that should do it for events. Like I said, we're going to be doing all sorts of uh, all sorts of 
things in the future and many of those will have events for sure when we learn more javascript with the creative coding oh, do you need a little relax a little light music <laughs> There you are. We hope you've enjoyed the full lesson then on functions, the different types of functions and events. Learn JavaScript creative coding. If you're still here, hey, that means you're into this. Why don't you come join us at Slack, zimjs.com slash Slack, and say hello. We'd love to hear from you. Ciao.